In early 2024, the Gaia mission spotted something off just 2,000 light years away, practically next door in galactic terms. A stellar black hole was hiding in plain sight. Not just any black hole, though. This one weighs in at 33 times the mass of our Sun. It's the heaviest stellar black hole ever discovered in the Milky Way. They called it Gaia BH3, and technically, it shouldn't be there. You see, black holes of this mass usually form in low metal environments, places untouched by the recycled matter of exploded stars. In other words, the early universe. But Gaia BH3, it's just sitting there, quietly orbiting a dying star like it's no big deal. No accretion disk, no X-ray fireworks, no warning. That's like finding a dinosaur drinking from your backyard pool. So either our models of stellar death are more flexible than we thought, or something from the deep past managed to slip through the cracks and stayed. This isn't just a cosmic heavyweight, it is a message. The universe is not quite what we thought it was, according to our fancy little theories. And I noticed that lately we've been drowning in such messages, from the good old solar system to faraway galaxies, and the behavior of the universe itself here are the most recent unexpected discoveries that challenge our understanding of the cosmos. For decades, Mars was the poster child of planetary disappointment. Once hailed as Earth's twin, it turned out to be a red, cracked husk, a place where water used to be, where hope used to live. We thought we'd wrapped it up. Mars was dead, dry, geologically silent for billions of years, except it's not. In 2024, a series of radar readings and seismic measurements from the InSight lander and orbiting spacecraft started whispering a different story. Beneath the Martian surface, under layers of regoliths stretching kilometers deep, something is lurking, something vast. The data points to massive underground reservoirs. You guessed it. Most likely, there is water, whole oceans that leaked through the upper crust as it dried out, and that changes everything. If water really exists there, even trapped beneath rock and ice, then Mars has had internal activity far more recently than we thought. It could mean conditions stable enough to preserve microbial life for millions of years, not in the past tense. Now. Although I have to mention the skepticism of some scientists that point to the possibility of liquid carbon dioxide instead. That's bad news for potential life. But either way, it means Mars is not the barren, fossilized world we imagined. But even though we still don't know exactly what's down there, this discovery shakes the foundation of what we assumed about planetary life cycles as a whole. Thousands of exoplanets orbit suns we barely started to study. We file them away based on atmospheric composition, temperature, position. But what if our categories are built on false premises? What if other dead worlds are quietly hiding oceans of possibility beneath their skin? But if a frozen planet next door can hold on to the ingredients for life, what about everywhere else? In 2025, astrophysicist Daniel Whalen and his team proposed something that flips the cosmic timeline on its head. According to their simulations, planetesimals, the rocky building blocks of planets, could have formed as early as 200 million years after the Big Bang. And that inevitably means conditions for liquid water on their surfaces. That had to happen at least somewhere. Let that sink in. 
first terrestrial planets appeared just moments, cosmically speaking, after the universe cooled down enough for atoms to form at all. This is much, much earlier than anyone expected. We're talking hundreds of millions years in advance. Until now, we believed rocky planets were a late game feature, something that required multiple generations of stars to seed the universe with heavy elements. But Whelan's work suggests that even in the ashes of the very first stars, the raw materials were already being shaped into a world that could be inhabited at least by microorganisms. And another recent discovery adds even more probability to really, really early conditions for life. Q. James Webb Space Telescope Astronomers studying the most distant galaxy observed at this point, JADES GSZ140, discovered something that shouldn't be possible, oxygen, and lots of it. That means this galaxy, seen as it was just 300 million years after the Big Bang, had already gone through at least one full cycle of star birth and death. This pushes the emergence of complex chemistry far earlier than anyone expected, which leads to a sobering realization. If planets could form that early, and if life-enabling elements were already spreading across the cosmos, then maybe life didn't wait for us. Maybe we're not the beginning. Maybe we're just one chapter in a much older book. But that inevitably invokes a classic Fermi paradox. Where are all those aliens that came to be as early as 13 and a half billion years ago? During that unimaginable period, you could colonize the whole observable universe five times over. So what killed them in their cribs? Boy, do I have a creepy answer for you. Ever since the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope started coming in, astronomers kept noticing these things, tiny specks, scattered all across the deep field images. At first, they seemed rare and obscure, but they kept showing up again and again, literally hundreds of them. They were quickly dubbed Little Red Dots, a nickname that's deceptively cute for what might be the most unsettling discovery in modern astronomy. Because these aren't galaxies, at least not the galaxies we know. Astronomers estimate their sizes being from 150 to 500 light years across, and it's so tiny you'd have a hard time spotting them against our Milky Way. That is, if little red dots haven't been so darn bright. The obvious culprits are supermassive black holes in the process of consuming matter. They are plenty in this epoch, around 600 million years after the Big Bang. But little red dots don't shine like a typical quasar. They lack X-rays. And if they are just tiny proto-galaxies supercharged with bright stars, well, it doesn't make sense either, because what are the chances of seeing essentially the same anomalous stellar balls hundreds of times all around us? According to our current models, little red dots shouldn't be possible. And yet, here they are. Or, to be exact, here they were, since they completely vanished after the first billion years of the universe. Yikes! Maybe these things really did kill all early life somehow, so it couldn't help but develop much later. Well, the most recent studies suggest that these are actually a type of quasar, but an odd one. What we see is essentially a very, very dense cocoon made of gas and dust that hides a feeding supermassive black hole. It explains the absorption of X-rays, but, well, does not at all explain how and why those cocoons formed all over the place and then disappeared. So let's just not pretend that it's all business as usual and openly admit that our models of the early universe are built on sand and preferably start digging up, not even deeper. Because just as astronomers started to accept that these tiny specks might be obstructed quasars, one of them did something even weirder. 
the JADES GSZ131 object seems like your run of the mill little red dot. It's one of the brightest and earliest compact galaxies discovered by James Webb Space Telescope, but the devil is in the light it was emitting, specifically Lyman Alpha radiation, a signature wavelength of ultraviolet light that young hot stars tend to produce. And under normal circumstances, that wouldn't be strange at all. Except for one problem. At the time this galaxy existed, just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, the universe wasn't transparent as it is today. It was still filled with neutral hydrogen, a thick cosmic fog that absorbs and scatters this exact kind of light. So, according to our models, no Lyman Alpha radiation should be able to travel through it. It must be consumed by the hydrogen haze of the early cosmos. We see this exact effect, the Lyman break, in all galaxies from this time period. And yet, this little red dot doesn't seem to care and just shines clear across the universe like the fog was never there. This breaks one of the central ideas in modern cosmology, the epic of Ryanization, the moment the universe transitioned from opaque to transparent. We believed it happened slowly, over hundreds of millions of years, as the first stars and galaxies ionized the fog and let light finally travel freely. But if galaxies like Jade's GSC 13-1 were already punching through that barrier, then either reionization started much earlier than we thought, or it didn't happen uniformly at all. Maybe the universe didn't gradually become transparent like a curtain lifting on a stage. Maybe it cleared in patches, violently, chaotically, like spotlights cutting through a storm. But what makes sense to us, intuitively, is a nightmare for cosmologists that now have to somehow redo their models to include chaotic rayonization. And if that wasn't enough, what came next shook the foundations even harder. Not just of space, but of everything we thought kept space in check. In 2025, researchers working with DESI, the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, published the largest 3D map of our universe, but it came with a twist. As this data shows, dark energy, the mysterious force accelerating the expansion of the universe, is not at all what it seems. Since the late 1990s, we've operated under a simple but elegant idea that Einstein's cosmological constant, the lambda in his equations, represented a fixed energy density in the vacuum of space, a cosmic pressure, steady and unchanging, gently pulling galaxies apart over time. But the DESI team noticed something strange in the way galaxies are arranged across vast distances, a pattern that doesn't quite line up with predictions. It all has to do with baryon acoustic oscillations, essentially ancient cosmic sound waves that made matter clump in a certain way. So we have more galaxies in those dense spots now. But when the DESI team looked at the data, these rings of galaxies turned out to be bigger than we expected, meaning that back in the day, dark energy was noticeably stronger. And if that's true, then lambda isn't a constant. And our neat lambda CDM model, the backbone of modern cosmology, is busted. You see, it depends on a strictly fixed dark energy component to explain everything. So what's going on? One possibility is that dark energy isn't a static force, but a dynamic field. Something fluid and evolving, like a cosmic weather pattern shifting over time. Theoretical physicists call this idea quintessence, a scalar field that rolls and fluctuates, subtly altering the expansion rate as it changes. Another possibility is even more radical. The vacuum energy of space itself is unstable. That the very fabric of the universe has phases, like water turning to steam, and we're just watching it transition in slow motion. 
In either case, we'd be entering territory that standard physics can't map. Our equations would need rewriting. That is, if DESI results will be confirmed multiple times over. The good news is, with weakening dark energy, the universe won't experience the big rip when even stars and planets would be torn apart. Probably, the cosmos even could eventually compress into its original form to produce another Big Bang. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I suggest just wait a trillion years or two and see for yourselves. In the meantime, another discovery quietly pulls the rug out from the very notion of how the universe should behave. In 2025, astrophysicist Lior Shamir published a study using data from the James Webb Space Telescope's Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, and what he found defies one of cosmology's most sacred assumptions. The whole universe might be spinning. The study analyzed over 260 ancient spiral galaxies, looking specifically at their handedness. Whether they appeared to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise from our point of view, in an isotropic universe, one that has no preferred direction, the distribution should be roughly 50-50, meaning equal spins and no large-scale bias. But that's not what Shamir saw. Instead, about two-thirds of the galaxies he recorded rotate clockwise, while only a third counterclockwise. And this isn't just a mild imbalance. The asymmetry was strong enough to suggest that something made these galaxies prefer one rotation over the other. As if there is a large-scale directional axis across the observable universe, or in layman's terms, the universe seems to rotate. And that's a big deal. Because this rotation just slams the cosmological principle. The idea that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic on large scales. It is the cornerstone of modern cosmology. It's what tells us that no place in no direction is special. Moreover, a rotating universe would twist the very fabric of space-time. It could introduce subtle curvature in how light travels, how galaxies drift, even how time flows. It's a feature we've never accounted for, because we assumed it couldn't exist. And what a surprise, precisely this large-scale cosmic rotation might help solve the apparent fluctuation of dark energy I mentioned earlier. The very data used by surveys like DESI could be skewed by the orientation of the spinning universe and make dark energy look unstable. So, it's a radical idea, but it already starts to fit. Seems like the universe has been spinning all along. We just didn't notice. But the real question is, what made the whole cosmos spin? If Lior Shamir's results hold up, the simplest explanation would be, we are all living inside a black hole. This theory is called black hole cosmology, and for a long time was considered just a neat little paradox. You see, if one were to condense all known matter in the observable universe into a black hole, it would have exactly the same size as an observable universe. Cute coincidence, huh? Well, maybe we need to start taking it more seriously, since all the black holes we know of do rotate. And evidently, so is our universe, even if ever so slightly. So. Tell me in the comments, how do insides of the biggest black hole ever feel like? And also let me know which of these revelations made your head spin the most. Stay tuned, because the universe is far from done challenging our perceptions.